Still have people, why not? Hey boys and girls, I'm sitting here in Jerry Moen's shop talking about the Blue Max Automatic brand new offering. You guys might remember the flipper video that I did not too long ago, I'd say probably six, seven, eight months ago on the various Blue Maxes and on the Panther. Well now the next progression is the Automatic. Say hi to everybody, Jerry. Hi. All right, now let's get this started. We're going to take a good look at the Blue Max Automatic inside and out and maybe Jerry will uh, take one apart for us. After a couple of fuck-ups that you guys won't see, we're going to try this again. Uh, we're going to talk with Jerry first about the uh, the importance of the Blue Max, what it means to him. I've already discussed this in the uh, videos that I've made for the Blue Max flippers in the past, uh, but I think it's really important for uh, the viewers at home and the collectors to kind of hear the story uh, directly from your mouth. So take it away. The reason why we come up, why I came up with the name the Blue Max. Uh, I had a friend of mine, his name was Raymond Beetle. He uh, used to come to my shop every day and uh, sat in a certain chair. We both grew up in Lubbock. He, of course, became a, a very famous uh, race driver, drag racer. And we haven't seen one another in uh, many years. All at once he started coming to my shop every day. We become uh, almost inseparable, have lunch every day, and uh, he began to know a lot more about me, and I began to know a lot more about him. Had a great, great deal of respect for him. Uh, I had been thinking about a lightweight knife before uh, Raymond died. Raymond had a heart attack, passed away, and uh, that sort of spurred this name onto that lightweight knife. Uh, I thought it'd be a real nice thing to honor him. Um, and he would have loved it. He did love the idea. He knew about the idea before this, this uh, heart attack. But uh, going on down the road, uh, it took a long time to develop the idea. Um, contoured and so what have you to make it smooth and clean looking. And yeah, because your idea was to keep this as lightweight as possible so you didn't want to junk it up with putting steel or titanium or aluminum liners inside. You really wanted to make your frame all out of carbon fiber and just the, you know, just having the lock done in titanium and things like that. So exactly. what you did was you created something that, and unfortunately they're all sold out now, but you created something that nobody had really seen uh, that often before, which was a, you had a mid-size and you had a large size, but you had full-sized EDC style, tactical style flippers that were so lightweight that you almost couldn't tell that you were carrying them, but they were still built tough. That carbon fiber is tough shit. Oh yeah, for, for weight, strength it's one of the strongest materials in the world so uh, very very bad to work with it's it's toxic you need good vacuum systems and so on and so forth but as far as the look the strength and all the qualities of it it's perfect now a lot of people might be skeptical as you're making that move into an automatic because now you're you're keeping the same basic frame 
Uh, you're not putting steel inside. You're not putting titanium inside. Yeah, you've got a super hard firing coil spring in there. Is there any worry about uh, the stop pin coming loose by being set into carbon fiber? Explain to people why you've chosen to keep with that same theme. Well, strength-wise, again, uh, carbon fiber farther away is the strongest. The put putting a stop pin into carbon fiber is not like putting a stop pin into G10 or a softer material. It's it's actually a, a stronger material than than titanium. So, like my ex-wife, it's going to take a slamming over and over and over and keep on coming back. Well, yes. So, <laughs> and uh, so far. All of the uh, Blue Max flippers and the lightweight flippers that were put out there um, have been operating very well. So next, we uh, I had a lot of people along the way say, "Boy, that'd be a cool piece," and that knife would be really cool if we uh, if you made it automatic. So it didn't come up once or twice. It maybe come up a half dozen times. So here we are. That's another reason why. Uh, we did it. Now, one of the, the things that I want to clarify to people at home is this is not a production knife. This is not a mid-tech knife. These are all being made individually, piece by piece, one by one, here in your shop, here in Dallas, Texas. Um, and you're putting a, a pretty small number on this run, aren't you? Very small, and uh, they are put together. They're ground here. Uh, we grind the blade. We uh, we bead blast it, acidize it, and tumble it right here in the shop. Some of my parts are, are um, machine made, and they, some of my parts are made outside this shop. But it's all assembled here, it's all tweaked here. Yeah, there's been a lot of hand fitting going on, and especially oh. on the first couple, just to kind of get everything right. Oh my! No hang ups, firing perfectly. I watched you go through a number of different firing buttons and different profiles and stuff, just to get this as perfect as it could be. I don't know how it could be any more handmade, even though some of the parts you pick them up, you have to tweak them and uh, you put them together. And yes, it's all assembled right here. I think it's an important point to bring up because anybody that's buying into uh, really good quality automatics these days, you know, if they're in the price range that you're at, which is that $500 to $550, depending on the two sizes, I mean, we're used to spending three, four, five, six hundred dollars $600 on a production, uh, say like a Microtech or something like that, where it's a production knife. It's made on an assembly line, it's not hand fitted, it's not any of that. And you're sitting here at that same price level and creating what is really truly a custom. When we start talking about custom automatics, and we're talking about guys that are charging, you know, eight hundred, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars and more. And so my, you know, some of the makers that I love, like you know, Jeff Harkins, for example, you know, you're not gonna get a Jeff Harkins automatic without spending a couple thousand dollars. It's nice to know that we have an option right now, at least while supplies last, that we can get into a true custom that's beautifully made, and you've made some upgrades. Your carbon fiber looks nicer on these than the original Blue Maxes because now you're doing a light polish on them. Right. Um, beautifully contoured, very, very well made, but we're able to get into a custom for five to 550, and that's pretty awesome. Well, and part of the reason you're able to do that is a few pieces are outsourced to people that have the machinery to do them. Uh, it doesn't mean it isn't handmade because it's all assembled and put together here, and that's a that's a big question mark uh, along life's way here in the knife making industry. Uh, what what is custom? What isn't? You know, the way I answer it is: here's the knife. I handmade it. I put it together here. Yes, it's had CNC work. Uh, Hundred percenter is a hundred percent the truth, in my opinion. If somebody asks, I'm going to tell them exactly what I've done. Uh, That's the best way to be. Yeah, I mean, here we are. It's a knife. It's a beautiful knife for the amount of money that's being asked for it. And uh, buy it if you like it. 
I'm going to tell you the truth about it. I'm going to be as honest as I can be, and there we go. Well, let's take a little break right now and let Jerry set up, and we're going to take one of these bad boys apart, show you inside and out what makes this thing tick. And I think you're going to be surprised at, at how few parts are really involved in this and how simplistic it really is, but it was a long road to break it down to so few components and make it uh, as simple as it seems. So let's go ahead and transition over to the workbench and see what's going on inside. Here's the Blue Max 2, the, uh, the flipper that was made prior to the automatic. The automatic is a very, very, very similar in size. Here's an automatic. There's the Blue Max flipper. I'm going to take apart uh, one of these and put it back together and show you in the automatic uh, what's going on. You've got a pocket that the spring lays in, a coil spring. It's milled out down in there with a bushing. You've got the titanium backspacer. You've got your titanium clip that's brought in, bolted in, or fastened by the back side. Um, here we go. I'm going to put it back together and kind of show you the steps. Oops, I better get my glasses on. I can't see good anymore like I used to. have to bear with me. I'm not real used to people putting me on no video, so <laughs> sort of nervous. So there's your spring down in there, the coal spring. It's got a pocket deep enough to uh, to suck that spring up where it where it allows the blade. Here's your blade. It's also pocketed on the opposite of the face side. So uh, you got that the little ear on the spring that that uh, goes down in the carbon fiber and the ear coming out that the blade attaches to. And then it fits down over the bushing. And you got the little spring that, that uh, fits in a pocket for the button. The button's got a little indention in the back side. And incidentally, this is hardened steel also. So you have a hardened steel CTS XHP carpenter blade, and you got a hardened pinch uh, button. And that button goes down in this uh, re recess right here. I wouldn't suggest taking one of these apart if you buy one because they're a handful. Yeah, th this is not an instructional video for you guys at home to take yours apart. We just want to show you what's going on inside so you have a better understanding of all the hand fitting uh, and the work that goes into it. I mean, because even you're even sizing down the stop pin uh, to fit into the carbon fiber properly. I've seen you size down some of the buttons to make them not hang up, to be nice and smooth. So all this stuff is truly hand fitted. These are Stephen Kelly Titanium Pivots, uh, which is a great product. Steve Kelly makes the socket head uh, torque screws, and they're all uh, machine made, not stamped. All this knife is made in the United States of America which is important to me. Made right here at home where it needs to be made. And I may not be politically correct about everything, but <laughs> I expect to buy U.S. made merchandise. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder these days to do that, even in the knife world. But uh, it's nice to see that the uh, the pride is there and to be able to do everything here in the U.S. Uh, when at all possible. It is important to support uh, our U.S. knife makers. That button is on a seven degree uh, tapered lock. 
just like a liner lock. You've got your hardened stop pin and uh... Man, those fire out hard. Now it took you a long time to select the right spring for this to get the right tension, didn't it? Oh yes, I mean it's it's a handful of making one of these from from scratch. Uh, at least for me, it may not be for others, but So there it is guys, inside and out, uh, Jerry obviously makes it look very easy. This was already a completed knife here, so he didn't have to sit down and do any of the hand fitting that normally goes into them. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is I'm going to make my way into Jerry's office. He happens to have a scale in there. I'm going to show you guys just how lightweight this is compared to one of my personal favorite automatics, and let's see how it fares. Now, as you guys know, uh, I'm, listen, I'm a huge fan of a lot of different knife makers, and I'm a big fan of Microtech. And one of my favorite side-opening automatics in a smaller size is this guy right here. A lot of you guys are familiar with the LUDT. This is an aluminum frame version, not one of the more expensive uh, brass or bronze or anything else they've done. This is pretty much the lightest weight side-opening automatic I have ever owned. And for those of you that own one of these in whatever configuration, you already understand how lightweight this is. What we're going to do is show you right now what I believe is the lightest weight EDC sized side opening automatic that is currently available. And that's going to be the Blue Max 2, the smaller version, which is very close to this size. So Jerry, if you would do the honors of weighing that for us. Sure. We're going to take a look here. We're going to make sure it's zeroed out. No uh, treachery afoot. There we go. Triple zeros and boom. So we're looking at 3.53 ounces. Now that is really, really lightweight. You almost don't know you're carrying it. I'll be honest with you. I think it's a fantastic knife. It fires nice and hard. But we're going to show you a knife now that fires just a little bit harder. So we're going from 3.53 ounces to 2.5. Eight, nine. And that's the difference between using aluminum and using all carbon fiber. Yes, there is a price difference. And let's talk about that. You've got a production knife right here. And I want to point out, I'm not picking on Microtech. It just happens to be what I own, what I had in my pocket uh, to use as an example. And they're very, very similar in size and operation. But there are a lot of really great production level side opening automatics that you're going to spend three, four, five hundred dollars on. Here we're looking at a custom. Here we're looking at something that's made 100% in the U.S., which, by the way, Microtech is as well. I'm not making a comparison there. We're talking about something that's unique, that's limited. When these are sold out, that's it. They're done forever, no more. So keep that in mind when you're pricing this out and you're thinking to yourself, well, I could either buy a custom knife or I could buy a production knife. When we talk about value, we can't compare... Uh, a $30 knife from Walmart to a custom. So when you say, well, hell, Jim, you said it's $500 and that's cheap. I, I'm not saying in the entire world that it's a bargain. It's a bargain when you talk about production, mid-tech, and custom knives and what their actual value is. So keep that in mind. You're spending very little to get into a custom knife. You're getting one of the lightest weight, if not the lightest weight, currently available side opening automatic that's not a little two inch blade what is the uh, actual blade length on the blue max 2 what it's 3.2 correct let's look. Well, we'll take a look right here right now the uh, blade exposed blade is three and an eighth there you go three and one eighth of an inch fantastic carry size for those of you that like a bigger knife you get the regular size blue max one and you've got a three and three quarter inch blade this one's three and a quarter. There you go. So the uh, the LUDT is just a little bit larger. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us here. What I'm going to do is take you on a quick little tour of the shop, show you all the goodies that uh, Jerry's working with, and we'll take a look at um, some of the basic parts of the, the Blue Max Automatic to the finished product. Our way around the shop really quick and give you an idea of how Jerry is able to pump these bad boys out. He's not, he's not some guy sitting in a shed behind his house with a with a single grinder. Uh, he's got an amazing setup, albeit still in a fairly small space, uh, but an amazing setup. So here is the uh, blasting booth here. Of course, uh, you got to worry about your uh, your health and safety. So he's got this rig set up here and. 
I don't know how many times you're ever going to see this, but there are three TW90 grinders set up in a row. And if you've never had the pleasure of using uh, Travis Wirtz's grinder, it is truly amazing. And this is, uh, thankfully, uh, Jerry has been uh, tutoring me and teaching me how to make knives. And I've been getting the chance to work on these myself. And uh, it, it's really, really, really badass. Uh, going over here to some of the finishing area, this is where we put the final edges that just to put a little bit of a mirror polish on that uh, fine edge right down there. Got all the belts set up on the wall coming on around this way to the bandsaw. That's right folks, not everything can be CNC and water jet these days, come on now. There's this set of presses. And look at that beautiful old boy right there. Mm, mm, mm. That's probably the, uh, the coolest piece of machinery in here besides Jerry himself. There is the uh, big old surface grinder. Cell phone going off in the background. There's the buffing wheel. And right over there, that side over there, those little drawers, those are mine. That's where I keep my stuff. Yay! And then uh, we get a little bit of a view. There's my car. Don't mind the car. She's dirty. So we get a little bit of fresh air from time to time. So there is a quick tour of the shop. Now let's take a look at some of the basic components of how this is put together and we're going to wrap this video up. So as we take a look at the completed knife and we already noticed that there are very few components actually. Oh my god that fires so hard. Uh, there are very few components that go into it. Uh, because Jerry really has streamlined the process. So here is the original Blue Max. The uh, Blue Max 2, these are both the flippers. The Panther, which hopefully you guys already saw the video on this. This was basically a Blue Max in titanium, if you want to look at it like that. The full size Blue Max automatic, also very, very, very cool knife. Uh, a little bit thicker. When you take a look at these in comparison, uh, there definitely is a thickness difference but still super super easy to carry so here are the blades as they begin their life Jerry what's the thickness on these do you recall? 1 120 so 120 thou thick so not a super thick blade on there and this is one of the completed blades before he puts his makers mark on there and of course the uh, internals of the frame Look at the contouring that goes into this. Beautifully, beautifully done. This ridge right here is actually really helpful. Uh, number one, it, it works as a locator so you can find where the uh, plunger is without actually pushing into areas and accidentally hitting it. It also works as a guard to give you a flat surface that the plunger is just a little bit underneath so it's not going to fire accidentally in your pocket. That's a very, very important feature. And all that has been uh, really expertly done here into the carbon fiber. And we were talking earlier about the differences in the carbon fiber. These are more contoured and uh, because of the thickness. And a nice light polish has been done where on the uh, original flippers it has more of that matte finish. And we see here how the backspacer is installed. Pivot's already in place there and your blind screwed pocket clip, nicely milled pocket clip. This is what the backspacer looks like when it's outside of the knife. And these two little guys right here, so here is your plunger spring. So the spring that's being used underneath the firing button. And then your coil spring, which is actually what's firing out that blade. Uh, that is a super, super tight little spring right there. And there she is, guys. That is the inside and out of the Blue Max Automatic. I hope you guys enjoyed the time that we spent here on this. I know I've certainly had a lot of fun. Uh, Jerry is always a very, very gracious host. And I hope you guys have already gotten in line to get one of these because it really is a super fantastic knife. If you want something that's super lightweight, while these are already really, really, really lightweight, there's a you know there's more of a difference than I thought there between the Panther and the uh, the automatic Blue Max. This is now this kind of seems heavy, and I never would have thought that when I compare this to my titanium knives, it's not heavy. But when you hold these things side by side, there's a there's a big big difference. Yeah, that's all titanium. 
There you go, guys. Thank you, Jerry, for uh, allowing us to play around in the shop and see all the goodness. And with that, guys, I'm out of here, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.